Hello, my name is Etika from the Etika World Network, and today I bring you a Pokemon 5th Gen battle. Today's battle specifically is against someone who I battled on Facebook, actually, someone who added me on Facebook, and his name was Neutral. So today's match was a very, very long one. However, I felt it was a very interesting one as well. So going straight into the team preview, we will look at his team, and we'll see that he has a pretty big amount of threats on his team. Now... Specifically, looking at the Mamoswine, it's going to be a problem because Mamoswine is a huge problem for any team, regardless of who you bring. It's very, very bulky, has a massive attack stat, and its two stabs hit almost everything in the game for super effective damage. So, in order to effectively battle this Mamoswine, I have to put priority on Feraligator because my Feraligator carries the Aqua Jet. So, hopefully, I'll be able to play around Mamoswine like that. However, he does also have the Alakazam and the Rodon Wash, which will be problems in themselves as well. Mainly for Rodon Wash's awesome coverage with its dual stabs and Alakazam for its great base speed as well. I am a little bit concerned about Chansey as well, because if I do lose my physical walls too quickly, then this Chansey will prove to be a massive problem. However, the things which I outlined just now are common problems that everyone has to face when battling these Pokemon. So, pretty much as long as I play my cards right here, I should be okay. So, now we are going to go straight into the battle. So, as I've said, today's battle is against someone named Neutral. So he begins with his Chansey, and at this point, I believe I start off with my Superior. Yes, I do. And the main reason why I started off with Superior is just because I knew Superior would be able to outspeed most of the things that he had on his team. So I go for the taunt on the Chansey, wanting to prevent it from doing anything like Toxic or Thunder Wave. However, he switches out, and I wanted to knock off Chansey's Evil Light as well. But instead, I go and knock off the Metacham's Choice Scarf, which is not too bad of a prospect either. I know a high jump kicking Choice Scarf Metacham would definitely be a little bit of a threat to this team. However, I send in my Gyarados in there to intimidate and then neuter him with the um, water typing as well. So basically, he goes for the Fire Punch and it doesn't really do too much either. So thankfully, Metacham, I don't believe will be much of a threat for the rest of the game, thanks to him losing his Choice Scarf. And now that he goes for the Switch, I just decided to go for the Thunder Wave because I wanted something to get slowed down. Luckily enough for me, it happens to be his Rodon Wash. So not too bad of a prospect there. However, I do not want to stay into a Volt Switch. So I go into my Superior now, playing it safe because it resists both of his stabs. However, he goes for the Trick, which I did not expect. However, it doesn't really hurt me too much because I get the Choice Scarf. And Superior's main goal is to run in there really fast and Thunder Wave something, or rather Glare something. However, he gets the Lumberry and it cures his Paralysis, which really sucks for me. However, I go for the Thwear... I go for the glare again to be able to slow something down, but I just get his chancy, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference. So what I'm going to do here is switch out and go into my roller because it'll be able to resist Thunder Wave thanks to the ground typing and Seismic Toss thanks to the ghost typing. I stay in on the Metacham because I wanted to get my Stealth Rocks up. However, he does carry the Ice Punch, which I totally did not expect at all. And so... Stealth Rocks at least are set up. However, I do not want to stay in there with Metacham because I feel that Golurk is a really solid counter to Chansey, as Chansey cannot do anything to Golurk except Toxic him. But what kind of Chansey do you know carries Thunder Wave and Toxic on the same set? Anyway, so he goes for the Ice Punch, and my Gyarados is able to come in and slow down the Metacham once more. So he's forced to switch out and goes back into his Chansey. However, at this range, I believe I went for the Thunder Wave once more. And thanks to the natural cure, the Thunder Wave won't really... Well, you guys know all this already. I'm not saying anything you don't. So, he stays in there with his Chansey now, and I see this as a great prospect for me to go for a taunt, I believe, on this turn, because... Oh, actually, a roar. All right, then. So, I attempt to, para I, I attempt to shuffle his team a little bit, just to, just to see if I can get a good switch initiative on the guy. I wanted to go into something that I can switch in safely onto the Chansey to be able to take the Thunder Wave. However, he goes to his fortress and now even though he has the toxic spikes or he would have a setup i wasn't really too concerned with that i actually thought he would switch so i went for the roar again however he didn't and he stayed in so no big deal there so he goes into his alakazam now and i am a special wall so i knew i'd be able to take his psychics relatively well however he gets a critical hit on the first turn yet i'm able to thunder wave him so that is alakazam who is no longer a threat for the rest of the game because he is slowed down and this means that he will be easy retaliation fodder for one of my slower yet more powerful physical threats. Now I go for the Aqua Tail, however he survives it thanks to the Focus Sash, which I did not expect, but he goes for the Psychic once more and get this. 
double crits. So Gyarados is only able to stay in there for oh so long because it takes two critical hits back to back. What the hell are the chances of that? Like I've, I've never seen that before. Anyway, so, well, actually I have. This is Pokemon Black and White. I've seen things like this before. I've seen five protects in a row. Fuck you, Pat Rat. So he goes into the infamous Mamoswine now. However, he double switches expecting me to go into something which would fear it. But I don't because I knew that he probably wouldn't want to risk staying in too much, even though he could Ice Shard. But I don't think he would know that the Ice Shard would kill me at that range because my Gyarados has some defense EVs as well. But either way, you know he wants to play safe with Mamoswine. So I have to make sure that I'm able to stroke Mamoswine's cock enough to make him come out. However, I go for the taunt on the Fortress and he expected that quite well and goes for the Gyro Ball instead. But it doesn't really do too much damage since I I do resist it, of course. However, he's stuck on attacking moves now, so I see this as a great opportunity to wear the fortress down. Now, what you're going to see here is me basically aquatailing this fortress to death because at the same time, I don't want to switch in something because he might switch. Like, basically, I wanted to. I guess I was a little bit stubborn here. I wanted to basically take out the fortress with enough aquatails from Gyarados so this way it wouldn't be a threat for the rest of the game. However, I didn't want anything else getting toxic either, so I wanted to stay in there and make sure that the fortress was dead. However, on the turn his taunt wears out, he goes right into his Mamoswine, and he expected that really well as I go for the taunt on this turn, and I taunt the Mamoswine, which means absolutely nothing. So at this range, I believe that Gyarados is not really that important to the team anymore since he did his job quite well. And I shouldn't even say that. That's a very hurtful thing to say. Gyarados is massively important to the team. It did its job extremely well well. And so now I go into my Feraligator, who will be able to priority the um, the Mamoswine. However, he switches out knowing the threat there. But I kind of figured that he would switch out. So I go for the Sword Dance, expecting the switch. And now I see this Rodom in there. However, I play extremely reckless with my Feraligator, and I take the Vault Switch to the face. And the critical hit did matter, because I have defense EVs in special defense and in HP. Now, when I said defense EVs, I meant only in special defense. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, so my main counter to Mamoswine is taken down thanks to a critical hit and me playing like a fool. So apologies for that. However, I am able to go in there with my Anunzi the Spider and Thunder, his Metacham, who wasn't a threat in the first place after he got his Choice Scarf knocked off. So now that his Metacham is out of the game, it makes it a bit easier for me to do some damage with my with my Galvantula. However, I expected him to go into his Mamoswine because I didn't I didn't really want to use the Thunder on Rodom. I knew that the Giga Drain would do a lot. However, the Giga Drain does a massive amount of damage to Mamoswine. However, he's still alive. So I am pretty much had the job almost done. The Stealth Rocks are still in there. And so the next time Mamoswine comes in, he will die from the Stealth Rocks. But remember that point very well. It's going to mean a lot later on in this battle. Anyways, so he goes into his Blissey. Uh, of course, to wall my Galvantula. However, I don't want the toxic damage to rack up too much, even though it is only level 1 poison, so it won't really rack up, but it will do a lot of damage per turn. So he goes for the either the Thunder Wave or the Seismic Toss. I didn't see that. And I set up my Stealth Rocks again because I want to make sure that that Mamoswine dies when he comes into the game. Now, he knows his Mamoswine is going to be a massive aid to his team, so he wants to play safely with his Mamoswine. The best way to pay safely with Mamoswine at this point is to make sure that the Stealth Rocks are gone on his perspective. But my best way to play safely is to make sure my Stealth Rocks are up no matter what. So my main goal here is to make sure that his Ferrothorn, I mean not Ferrothorn, his Fortress is not able to come in and set up any Stealth Rocks. So he goes into his Rodon now, I suppose trying to threaten me out with the Hydro Pump. But I go for the Grain Punch once more just to be able to get a little bit more health since I don't have Life Orb on Golurk. So it will be able to absorb a pretty good amount of damage. However, he does get the Wish on his Rodom. So not beneficial for me. So at this point, there's nothing I can really do in terms of keeping Atlantis in there because I do not want it to die from a Hydro Pump. So I just go into my Superior and he does go for the Hydro Pump and I am able to take it relatively well. And now at this point, I feel that going for a Glare will definitely be the best move because at least it'll slow down his Rodom a bit. But he goes right into his Fortress, who doesn't really mind the Glare too much at all. So because Fortress doesn't really... Oh, fuck that. I just went straight for the Leaf Storm. I said balls to the walls. Now, one Leaf Storm, even though he quad resists, is able to do a somewhat good amount of damage. However, after the Leftovers, I know another Leaf Storm will not finish him off. And I was scared about that. I didn't know if it would or not, but I, I kind of figured it wouldn't. So I switch out and I go into my Embor now, 
And I knew that Embor coming in on a fortress would be able to wreck it in the face. However, he rapid spins my stealth rocks, which were meant especially for Mammal Swine. So now that my stealth rocks are gone, I have to make sure that those go back up thanks to my Golurk. So I flare blitz the hell out of this fortress, hoping that this thing does not switch. Or rather, I was hoping he would switch into something else. But of course, why would he? I mean, Fortress pretty much did his job there. He got rid of the stealth rocks. So at this point now, I need to make sure that those rocks go back up. However, his Mammoth Swan comes right on in, trying to prevent anything like that happening. So he goes and I believe he goes for the Earthquake on this turn. However, thanks to my low amount of HP and the poison damage, I'm not going to be able to resist it enough to be able to retaliate against this Mammoth Swine. And he probably carries the Ice Shard anyway, so it definitely was bad on my part. I go into my Galvantula here, and he switches out fearing the HP Ice and goes right into his Chansey. But I just go for the, well, not the HP Ice, the Giga Drain most likely. And I just go for the Giga Drain to be able to get a good amount of health back. However, I want to make sure that I stay in there with enough HP to survive the Ice Shard, but I know that Mammoth Swine hits like a truck, so if I don't have enough HP, then he will definitely roll over me with the Ice Shard no problem at all. So at this point now, I go back into my Embor, and I specifically go for the super, so the super Power here because it will hit everything on his team for a pretty high amount of damage. And so at this point now, the chance he's in there, and he switches out and goes into his Rodom, I suppose expecting the Flare Blitz, but I just go for the superpower, and I knew that anything that takes the superpower to the face will die. So Rodom is definitely... Oh, wow! Okay, so Rodom is a very defensive Pokemon. It's able to survive the superpower. However, I don't really take recoil damage from the superpower, thanks to it not being a recoil-inducing move. However, he does switch out again, go into his Chansey, expecting me to go into Superior or some other Pokemon, but I just go for the superpower once more, just to be able to hit... I mean, I knew that he would probably be able to Hydro Pump me out, but I kind of figured he was going to switch. I th I thought he was. Like, I didn't think he would stay in there like that. So I get the critical hit on the superpower secondary onto Chansey. However, I'm not sure how much that mattered. I don't think it mattered too much, though. But regardless, my, my uh, Embor now dies thanks to the poison damage. And so the only thing that I really have left in this battle is my Anunzi the Spider. Now, he, I suppose, feels very confident that he'll be able to take me out with the Ice Shard here. And so I hope and pray to, to whatever it is that exists that I don't die, but I do, sadly. And so my, uh, my Galvantula goes down, however, I, and that would pretty much be the game there because his Mammoth Swine does a massive amount of damage. I'm not sure if it was Choice Bandit or not. I couldn't even tell, but regardless, uh, he does hit my Mammoth, he does hit my Gold Lurk for pretty high amount of damage, but I am able to take down his gold, his Mammoth Swine, and the thing is, is that I'm not going to be able to survive the poison damage on this turn, so even though I did take down his main threat, at the end of the day, I wasn't able to keep Golurk alive long enough to be able to take down his, um, I believe it was his Rotom, and so that will be the end of the game. However, it was a very, very enjoyable match. I really had fun myself. It was a very competitive battle. A lot of switching around, a lot of predictions, a lot of expecting someone to do something different and rolling your dick around and putting it in your ass. It was, yeah, it, it was, let's just say it was crazy. Um, anyways, my name is Etika, and if you did enjoy this battle, then definitely come look at my other videos if you do happen to stop by my channel. I mean, if you do like it and you happen to come by and say what's up, I would definitely appreciate it if you looked at some of my videos. Just let me know how I'm doing. You know, you don't have to subscribe. You don't have to do like them or anything like that. I mean, as long as you come to my channel, if you do decide to come and enjoy the stuff that I put up, then that's fine enough for me, man. Anyways, take care of yourselves and have a good one.